Welcome everyone to the Pyramid Science Foundation. And we're really excited today to introduce Paul Barlow. Paul has a degree in psychology and is qualified in a variety of therapy modalities, including NLP, hypnotherapy, quantum healing hypnosis, and neural pathway restructuring, um, just to name a few. From this variety of trainings, he most easily describes himself as an energy transformation therapist. With 14 years of experience as a therapist and 22 years on his spiritual path, I'm sorry, 26 years on his spiritual path, we'd like to just extend a warm welcome to Paul. Paul, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. Thank, thank you, thank Paul. You. Very nice to be here. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm over in the UK. Um, I live in a little place called Cornwall. It's a, a county within the UK. Um, on the southwestern tip, it's very, very rugged landscape. We've got cliffs, we've got surf. Um, we've got all the sort of uh, legends of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. We've got the Celtic mythology as well. So it's a very, very rich landscape, very beautiful, rugged landscape. And um, I kind of draw a lot of inspiration from this place where I live. Um, absolutely love living here. The weather could be better, but always, you know, it could, it could, if it was warmer most of the time, it would be fantastic. But um, it is a beautiful place to live. Um, I don't know really where to start. I mean, there is a backstory to the whole, to the, to the workshop. I've done two workshops using the pyramids, but there is a bit of a backstory of getting to that place of doing those workshops. Um, like I said, I've been on the spiritual path for 26 years, had a very powerful awakening in Australia at age 22, um, where I had uh, a, a sort of like a oneness experience for about eight hours straight. And I had sort of electricity going through my body. And I had just this most, most incredible experience of sensory experience of being able to sort of hear everything that was going on around me and complete peace at the same time. I could hear every every conversation in every restaurant as I was walking down Surface Paradise, um, and yet yeah, complete peace. I could feel everybody's feelings, and um, um, people have had these experiences. Um, I had this experience out of the blue for, for eight hours, and and it was it literally just changed the direction of my life. Um, and and it's kind of relevant to, to this because I started to, from that place, I started to draw pictures. I, I'd never really drawn pictures before, but suddenly I felt very inspired to draw pictures. And, and I just started, I bought some pens and I, from a shop and I just started drawing whatever was coming into my mind. Um, and this is, this is the first, hopefully you guys can see this, but this is the first picture that I ever drew. It's kind of weird and wacky and interesting. Very interesting. Um, no idea where that came from. And then it just, it was just literally relentless. It was day after day, drawing, drawing, drawing. And what I recognize now, as I look back, is I was drawing a lot of pyramids. As you can probably see, a pyramid. Um, another pyramid there in the center. And this one's really, um, a really powerful one for me. Uh, it's me inside of a pyramid working, working with the energy in a pyramid. And it's just wow. incredibly powerful now. I look back. This was 2003 I drew this. And again, no, awesome. no, That's yeah, no kind of understanding really of what, what was going on and where it was coming from, but just drawing because I felt I needed to draw. And it was about, I don't know, it was about 10 or 12 years ago, I went to a, I went to a, a guy. Have you heard of Dolores Cannon? I love Maybe. Dolores Cannon. And yeah, her. I, I think she's, yeah. she's wonderful, isn't she? Wonderful. She's yeah. done, you know, I did one of, a couple of her trainings and I trained in her um, hypnosis technique, the quantum healing hypnosis yeah. technique. And um, I, I sort of was starting my practice doing that. And I thought I really, I really, really need to go and have an experience myself um, and, and kind of really understand not just the mechanics of doing it for someone else, but what it's like to have that experience. So I went to a guy in London who was apparently the, the sort of best guy in the UK at the time. He was getting the best results. So I went to him and I had a very, very profound experience. Um, it, if it was my mind making some something up, I would have probably been a, 
you know, an Olympian or something like that from Greece um, or something like that. That would have been more if that if it was a fantasy, but it was very, very different. It was um, it started off in in amongst the pyramids in Egypt. And I was aware that I was about about 20 feet high. Um, and I was working with sort of like a feeling of there was a feeling of working with a grid of energy. And I was able to walk through the stones of the pyramid and go into the center of the pyramid and actually work with this basically an energy ball in the center of the pyramid. And through that uh, energy ball, I could go up to other pyramids around around the planet. And I, I became very aware that I was working with a group and we were setting up an energy grid. And um, the end, toward the end of it, I ended up meeting with a council and they said that the grid works complete for the planet. Now you've got to incarnate and go through the whole process. So oh. you can imagine what that might have felt like. You're, 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 you're very expanded. You're working with energy. You're very aware. And suddenly you've got to go into that amnesia process and you've, you've really got to put yourself through it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just amazing now getting to this place when I saw, um, I think it was back in April or May of this year, I saw a video with JCK um, sat in a pyramid, like I can see you now, Lisa. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what's that? What's that? What's she saying? What's what's going on? And I needed to know. And then I saw Joanne Dunn. I guess some of you guys have heard of her as well. Mm -hmm. And I saw her in her pyramid. And I, I, I then really had to find out what was going on, why these people were sat in these pyramids. And I found Charlie and and all of my pyramid. And I started to, to meditate in my pyramid. And um, I started noticing things were manifesting quicker. My meditations were deeper. And just all sorts of things were happening very, very quickly. It was a, definitely an amplification of energy. Mm-hmm. I remember one day looking at my wall, which is opposite my pyramid. And I opened my eyes. And I looked on the wall. And I saw a picture I drew two years ago. I mean, this is this this one's wonderful for me. It's me sat in a pyramid meditating. Oh wow! So, yeah. for me, there's a real sense of destiny about this. Um, there's a real sense of just like oh, I was always going to get to this place working with pyramids. <laughs> yeah, I can't explain it any That's other how way. I feel. Yeah, that's how I feel too. Let me share this yeah. real quick with you because I yeah. had a. Um, a healing session uh, with a Dolores Cannons practitioner, one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, And my very first experience was I was a man. I was in a past life. I was a man. I was carrying a baby um, that was sick. And the practitioner said, where are you taking the baby? And as soon as I looked forward, I saw the great pyramid. And I said, Mm -hmm. I'm taking it to the pyramid to heal it in the crystal chambers below. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, all, all of it coincides. You know what I mean? It's, oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's great, and it's funny because the the past life experience I had in London was, you know, it, it didn't. It was uh, exciting and it was interesting, but it didn't make sense at the time necessarily. But down the line now, it, it makes so much sense. So much sense. So there's definitely yeah. a lesson there for for in you know impatience. You know, everything mm-hmm. is relevant in time. So um, my, my psychology work that I've been doing, I mean, when I, when I did my degree, I did four years of study, got my degree, and then I went into counseling, which, you know, um, is, is fine. But what I found is I, I, there was no curing anything. There was no really, there was no making things better. There was kind of managing things and there was dealing with symptoms and I felt very disillusioned from all that study and all that effort I'd put in, um, especially as a mature student going back to school. And I, I decided I wanted to really find things that would that would work and make a difference in people's lives. So I, I really sort of set to it and I've traveled the world. I've done trainings all over the world. And, you know, like the, I've, I have a list of qualifications now. Um, and sort of I've, I've amalgamated that into what I call energy transformation therapy, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, so I, bringing it all together, I thought, well, let's bring this therapy, this range of therapies into and, and bring the pyramids together and let's do a workshop. And 
I was actually quite wary of doing it at the beginning, the thought of it, because I thought, wow, you start you start playing with um, therapy techniques and then you, you, you're you amplifying the energy with, with these pyramids. I've just been working with one. What's it going to be like with eight or ten? Um, so I was quite wary of what, what might come up if I was to do something like that. So anyway, I, I invited some ex-clients, people I've worked with before that I had rapport with, and um, invited them to a, to a workshop. It got full really quickly. Everyone said yes. Everyone seemed to be excited, even though they didn't really know what they were being excited about. Um, and we, we got it organized and we've got a beautiful place to do it. Um, an old uh, church building, about 500 years old. And interesting, Charlie, you, you might you might find this um, quite interesting. They had a, a Tartarian crest on the wall. Oh. I love it. Love it. Um, with, sure. with a, it's either a lion or a griffin. I can't quite tell. It, it could be a griffin. Right. Um, and it's got a unicorn on the other side. Oh wow! Um, oh wow! Yeah, yeah, it's really, really cool. But it's huge as well. It's like it's like four, five feet wide. You know, five feet deep. It's right. huge, great crest. And I thought, wow, what an interesting thing, you know, to mm. to have in place. I'm doing this pyramid workshop. Um, I did also notice Charlie Ward. He was doing a talk recently, and he had a, a shirt on with a crest. Exactly the same crest with a griffin oh, really? and a unicorn, which I thought that's interesting. Yeah. Well, you pick up on these things, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you do. You see this stuff. So I thought that was, yeah. So we had this beautiful place, lovely energy there. And um, a couple of things for anyone who does want to set one up. I mean, a couple of mistakes I made in a way was I didn't have all my pyramids as organized as I could have. So it did take a lot longer to set them up um which is a bit of a mistake on my part and um i hadn't drilled the holes for the top <laughs> so, oh. So like, oh my god um but i had a load of tape so i was able to tape the tops together and kind of keep the structure it, it wasn't perfect but it was it was it was fine it worked um i would definitely prefer to have capstones in the future um for easier yeah. setup um because the zip ties are a little little tricky, but the capstone I think is a lot simpler when you're constructing. So for anyone wanting to do it in the future, um, definitely find a very a, a conducive environment that that's got maybe some some good space outside, some trees, you know, a sense of kind of you know nature around the place. And unfortunately, we did have that. We had a really lovely space, very quiet, um, so people were were able to go out and walk and and things like this. So a few, a few learnings there. Um, yeah. So once, once we, once we got the aligned all the pyramids up to magnetic north, got it set up in a sort of a circle, got everyone settled into the pyramids, and we we did a basic eyes closed relaxation. And what I noticed. Even halfway through that relax relaxation, the energy in the room shifted so quickly from, you know, everyone's come from their busy lives and organizing kids and whatever else. And the, the energy just settled really quick. Uh, I haven't seen it happen like that before. So that was that was something um, that I really noticed. We we then did a, a journey. Uh, so I took everyone on a journey and we we sort of scaled up a mountain. And we basically I took people to, to a cave entrance where they're going to get an ally for the day. So like a spirit ally to, to help them through the day. So I knew people were arriving with different issues. And I just wanted to call in as much energy as possible to, to support what we were doing, the work that we were doing. And that, that again shifted the energy in the room. The, the energy really ramped up after that process. So it was probably about 20 minutes, half an hour we did that journey. And... With everything we did, the energy shifted and changed and, and amplified. It was it was almost happening so quickly. Um, and I've done journey work before and workshops before, but I've never seen the energy shift like it did. Um, it was very quick. We we then set about the sort of main part of the work that we were doing for the day was to set intentions. And I'd asked everyone two or three weeks before the workshop to to really get in tune with what they wanted to um something they really wanted in their lives you know heart's desire 
And as people do with intentions, um, they came back with a mixed, mixed level of clarity on their intentions. Um, some people were still stuck in their head about what they wanted, you know, sort of in their own negative conditioning. Um, a lot of language of necessity, you know, I've got to have, I've got to, I ought to, I must, I should, that sort of language in their intention, which I really don't think is helpful. And the inner critic was fully, fully at work for some people as well. So I kind of like to um, compare it to sometimes um, it's like Christmas time and in, in, in kids. If you give kids a list and say, you know, what do you want for Christmas? Write it down. Off they go. They're so mm-hmm. quick. They're, they're, they've already they're you know, they're asking for more paper, whereas adults are kind of going generalizing, of course. Adults are going, well, I'm not really sure. I kind of don't really want that. And sort of like, yeah, maybe this, mm-hmm. you know, there's not that level of clarity that you get with kids. They're absolutely sure. You know, I want this yeah. robot, it's got orange stripes, and it's got blue tail fins. And, you know, they're so detailed and clear about what they want. And I think consequently, they get things, they manifest probably a lot, <laughs> a lot more effectively than we do for the most part. So we did a little bit of work on, on, sort of harnessing those the heart's desire and really getting down to what people wanted and getting people out of what they didn't want was probably one of the hardest things um as it is in my therapy practice to be honest that's one of the things i've come up against most of the time is people focusing on what they don't want and consequently they're attracting that and they're generating more of that in their lives um and it reminded me of a of a a story of uh, I went to a sweat lodge in the UK with with a very trusted friend and, and he was running it and he told me a story of a guy that had arrived for a previous sweat lodge and um can everyone hear me yes yeah okay the screen's just gone blank that's fine yep. um so he he said this guy had turned up to the sweat lodge and he was stressed he was overworked he hadn't had a time off for ages um he he looked you know he was really really he's in a bad state and they they went into the sweat lodge they'd done all their preparation work and they'd done the rounds of gratitude and and um and, and blessing and healing and things like this in this super hot environment obviously and it finally came round to the um sort of asking for something for themselves and he asked he said i really need a break in a in an expanded st- state of consciousness i'm not really sure if that was the most useful thing to uh, to ask for um two weeks later he broke his leg oh. and he, and he had eight weeks off work so he kind of got what he wanted but um, mm-hmm. so, so my, my, my friend who was running it said, just be very careful what you, what you wish for. And I think this is something I've actually learned personally in my work with my own, um, with my own pyramid, is really to be more mindful about what I'm thinking about. Mm-hmm. Because things are showing up so quick. So, so quick. Um, it was only the other day I was thinking, oh, I really could do with someone helping my social media hmm, while sat in my pyramid. And within two days, she's shown up. I didn't, I didn't put anything out. I didn't, I didn't advertise. She just showed up in my life and she's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And she's just, you know, helping me and taking care of certain things. It's just like, wow. I mean, things weren't showing up that quick before, you know. It's, uh, mm-hmm. it's definitely made a difference, um, the speed of things. So amongst, you know, when we work with the group, I'm guessing it's like the, the energy is so much more amplified it's it's really getting people to get very very clear about what what their intentions are and sort of take care of them in that way yeah so what i did with that sorry they do things do manifest very fast with the russian Mm -hmm. pyramid that's what Mm -hmm. i tell people it's like um jumping ahead of the line to place your order it literally is you know (laughs) yeah i like that i like that a lot yeah (laughs) So with the intentions work, we did a we did a like a, a meditation, a visualization, and I got people to really um, create what we call an NLP, a, a, an internal representation of of what it is they wanted. You know, a picture or a movie with the feelings as if they already have it. You know, we've we've all heard this stuff, and I got them to really kind of um, sink into that and and feel it, and and then kind of there's a process uh, that Shakti Gwain. The visualization process where you take that and you, you surround it in a pink bubble 
and then you kind of release it off into the into the into the sky. But what we'd already done is we'd set up a giant Russian pyramid in the astral plane. So we'd visualize this this structure all around us, surrounding us and protecting us and sort of holding us in the space. And all the all the um, the intentions went up into the apex, and they just lodged up in the apex and sat there in the highest energy. And it the energy just shifted so so heavily after we did that, I, positive and negative, um, because all these intentions had been set into the space, and also all this stuff started coming up for people, because as soon as you set an intention for what you really want, all the stuff that's in the way starts coming to the surface right that's that sort of therapy uh cognitive dissonance yeah. i guess you, you guys have heard of that term so all this cognitive dissonance started coming up you know now i'm thinking of what have, what have i got myself into here yeah. um <laughs> a few people started to wobble you know there was some some foot twitching going on there was you know was, i noticed in the in the people's body language it, things started to shift there was a bit of discomfort in the room and so I got people to go into their bodies and, and, and just kind of get into themselves and just have a look at what was happening now that they set this intention. Because obviously when you set an intention, here's where you are, here's where your intention is, and there's a gap between the two. So what's, what's in the gap, you know? And suddenly all this emotional start, stuff started coming up and that one lady, all she could see was a brick wall. And she started getting quite sort of, um, not sure what the emotion was, but you could see she was experiencing something in relation to where she was and what she wanted. And there's this great big brick wall that was in the way. It's like an impenetrable wall. So, so it looked. So all this stuff came up and, and, and people were really having wobbles and, you know, having to really attend to the emotional stuff that was going on with people. So something I learned from that is that if, if anyone's going to do a workshop with six or more people, I'd, I would say six or more, make sure you've got an assistant because, you know, it's, there's a lot of energy running in that space. Um, and if you've got someone having a really, really tough time, you, you, you kind of don't really want to leave the rest of the group to attend to them. And you're kind of split in your, in your sort of, in your energy and your focus. So I would definitely say if you have six or more, have an assistant, have someone to help you hold that space. Um, it was all fine on the day, but I had selected the people that were going to be there. Um, so, so that was quite, that was sort of thought through already. Hmm. Um, what we did with that, what everyone got stuff come up. And what we did with that then was we, we used, I, I took things outside and we worked with the earth element. So I got people to, we, we did a little process of sort of connecting into the earth or a tree, um, either one, connect into the energy and just talking to the earth or talking to the tree to, to ask the tree or the, or the earth to kind of take that energy from them, take that block, that emotion, that, that thought form, whatever it was they were feeling um, or experiencing. And we, that was quite a long process. We had sort of like people went out for about an hour and did that. I've got a lovely photo um, of three people lying in a gra in a graveyard on the grass. <laughs> so you've got these three people <laughs> lying lying on the grass and all these gravestones everywhere. It looks so, so surreal. Um, and one by one, people started coming back into the room um, in different states. I was kind of like watching the energy and just sort of feeling what was going on. And we had a real variety of um, experiences from people. Um, a lot of people gained a lot of awareness on, you know, issues that they've been having in their lives, awareness that they were able to kind of like walk forwards with and, and ended up to be very helpful awareness. And I had three people um, <clears throat> who had very, quite profound experiences. One lady, the one, the lady who saw the big, big brick wall, once she'd let that energy, let the earth sort of take that energy out of her body, she was able to see a, a way around the brick wall. And what was on the other side of it was something she didn't expect. Um, what she found was a, a younger aspect of herself sort of stood there kind of like, where's, where's mummy, you know, where's lost. And mm -hmm. she walked around the, the route around the wall and just saw this aspect of herself. And it was almost an immediate integration. Um, and it was really, you, you could feel, I can feel it now. I'm tingling now as I'm thinking mm -hmm. about it, really powerful experience. 
And I've talked with her since, and she just said it just made such a difference to her life um, to have that integration. It was almost like a lost part of her soul. Um, and she just didn't have any awareness that it was lost. But as soon as she yeah. saw it and integrated, it's made a real difference for her. Um, so it was a very powerful experience. Um, lovely to see, lovely to witness, lovely to be part of. Oh, goodness, yeah. Um, you know, any, anything like that's always lovely. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, on, a, on a first day, you know, when when people are meeting each other and and it's it's all sort of fresh and new, to have such a powerful thing happen um, mm -hmm. on the first day is you know it's, if you're doing a retreat, say you're doing several days, that's the sort of thing that happens like later on in the retreat. I, I found it's yeah. from my experience, this was this was quick, and and it was powerful. So that and that was by no means. Um, there was, there was lots of other uh, amazing things that happened. There was one guy that he he had had some sort of psychic attack. That that's what he was describing it as. Um, for for some time, this some entity was. He felt like if some entity was attacking him psychically, and he would get this sort of awful sense of its of its presence, and it would kind of knock him off his focus, and and he just felt like concerned a lot of the time about this this entity. <laughs> Whilst he was working with the earth, he, he got a very, very clear picture of a werewolf in his, in his mind's eye. And it really shook him up because it's the first time he'd ever seen, he knew what the feeling was, but now he got the picture to go with it. And mm -hmm. um, what came up with that, which was really interesting, was um, this incredible, vibrant light started coming out of his heart that he was, became aware of. And as that light came up, that sort of resource came up for him. I think once he'd let something go, it was almost like something in him was then activated and this light became, it just became very powerful. And, and, and the werewolf basically in the face of the light just recoiled completely from this light and uh -huh. still shook up when he came back into the room. So what I got him to do, I did a bit of an NLP technique with him. You can't, the, the mind cannot hold two things at the same time, but I got him to do that. I got him to hold the light hold the picture of the werewolf at the same time in the same space and I just got him to hold not moving between the two but holding the two together and what happened was the light collapsed the the werewolf collapsed the fear basically yeah and that I mean you know that's the stuff I would see normally after 10 or 12 sessions with someone not not in one day mm -hmm. not in one day especially in a group scenario that's that's deep stuff so I was I was really blown away by that experience. It was it was an incredibly powerful experience. And then, last but not least, certainly um, another chap who who really had been in a trance all day um, since we'd done the the, the first the first um, first journey up the mountain. He, he'd been in a trance all day, and I got his um, testimonial. A, a week or two later and and basically he said his life is like literally completely changed in the way he's um he's caring for himself better he's loving himself more he's taking care of his life i'd like to um compare it to carl jung's idea of the archetypes and the king archetype and the king is is, is the king archetype is all about looking after your realm you included and looking around you, looking at the groups that you belong to, your family, you know, what's important to you and actually identifying all of that and taking care of it. And he really, really has, has stood in, has stepped into that king archetype and, and is really looking after himself and his realm like, you know, never before. And, and his life is subsequently changing and changing and changing. And he's just happy and blown away um, at what's happening to him in his life right now. So this was, you know, I, I don't quite sure what his process was on the day because he was trance so early. Um, but I know that's the effect that's happened since, um, which is wonderful, right? So, oh, so definitely. <laughs> How many people are just walking around like a zombie, you know, looking for ways to repress their memories or, mm. you know, um, just dull down their senses because they just can't can't yes. handle the real power of themselves you know and that's well, exactly. what this is it's about exactly. tuning into yeah. the real power yeah and taking control yeah. of it you know yeah it's like the guy finding his own light you know and it's standing in that light nothing could touch him there was nothing to fear 
-hmm. And suddenly, once you've got that, what a what a change in your life, you know? Amazing stuff. So to the point where, you know, I, I actually want to do more workshops now rather than more one-to-one -one therapy. Because I, I just found so many things happen in that in that space in the in in the process of one day. Mm -hmm. um it, it makes more sense to me now to to actually do a lot more of this work in the future which is what i will be doing um i did do another workshop after that a few weeks after um it wasn't quite as organized and, and we ended up doing it in someone's like kitchen area kitchen dining room area um so it was quite arbitrary where we set up but do you know what even though it was an arbitrary sort of space that we did it in and there was a bit of a time pressure for for getting through the, the sort of um, therapeutic stuff I wanted to do. As soon as we set the pyramids into place, again, the energy of the, the whole space totally transformed really, really quickly. So that was, I, I sort of have a two time convincer. I need to see something or feel something twice to be convinced that there's a real effect going on here. And getting that second mm -hmm. confirmation really, really did it for me. Um, it really, it's made such a difference to the space. It's almost as if like the rest of the room wasn't relevant anymore, but the space we created with the pyramids mm -hmm. became like just so energized and so relevant um, and everything else was irre irrelevant. But where we put the pyramids originally felt irrelevant. Do you know what I mean? So it's almost like it took, I'm not quite sure what I'm trying to say. It just, it just really made the space quite special. How did you have yeah. this set up? Did you set them like up side by side or like in a grid type? Yeah, uh, with there was four of us for that one. So I did it as more of a grid, um, more of a grid again, aligned everything to magnetic north. And um, yeah, it was fine. Absolutely fine. I mean, even though people were sat facing maybe with the circle, more the circle sort of you can't get it perfect as far as everyone's sort of facing this the center, especially if you've I mean, you can look through one of the one of the bars if you need to. Um, it all worked anyway. It just it just worked. Um, it's I, yeah. I set up one up as nice. a circle, one up as a grid, and it just works. The, the space just gets activated, and yeah, it's good. And I found too that you know the pyramids work uh, when they're not aligned to the north, but when you tune it into the north, it's like increasing mm. the energetic dial of it. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. definitely supersonic mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think for, for something that's actually quite simple to do, it's worth doing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, to add, add that extra, just get the maximum amount out of, out of the experience and, and set things up, you know, the best the mm -hmm. best that they can be. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my two experiences so far. Very, very positive. Lots of learning from those from those experiences. Um, I think what I will do, I mean, in the future, I, I do this in my therapy work is to, to be a little careful about who I'm taking on in, in the workshops. Not, I don't, I don't mean to discriminate. It's, I find um, there, there, there's quite a few people looking for a, a magic wand treatment. Mm -hmm. they, they want you to make it all better and they don't want to do any work themselves. Mm -hmm. um and i find that those people i find very taxing on my energy when i'm working as a therapist i'm, I'm sure you guys have had experiences with this oh yeah 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 um that's so exactly why I, I stopped doing i stopped doing readings and stuff for people for a while because yeah. they become so reliant on you and go back into victim mode and i yes. want people to know that they are not they are more powerful than they know and they need to realize yes that. yes and, and do the everything power we can to... themselves yeah, the power with them. Yeah. Um, a very good therapist friend of mine, he, he once said to me, he said, I never pretend to be the expert in, in the dynamic. I always see them as being the expert. Um, I'm just there to help them discover their own expertise, yeah. discover their own power. Um, he, he describes himself as trying to be like a hollow bone. So he just tries to sort of channel through or allow to come through him what that person needs and try and reflect things back to them so they can kind of connect to what they've already got you know that mm -hmm. sort of thing and i do like that i do like that he did um he was doing a workshop once which i i was i was watching him and in the middle of this workshop is family constellations have you heard of that work no no family constellations i know work. i've done it about four times yeah. oh, okay cool 
cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's beautiful work. And um, he's doing this constellation with all these people involved. And he's, 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 he's in the middle of the process and he just suddenly s- says out loud, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. And I'm thinking as a therapist, oh, my God, you can't say that. You can't say, you can't say you're stuck. You're the expert. You know? And so I, I felt really uncomfortable when he said that. Um, and I, I, I didn't say anything. I just just felt that discomfort and watch what happened. So I was staying with him. And, and I went when I went back with him later, I said, why did you say that? You know, what, what was going on there? And he said, well, when I admit how I actually feel, it allows the energy to, to come through more easily. So if I just say it, I actually kind of get dissipate it. And he said, every time I do it, the um, I get exactly what I need soon after. So it was quite good learning that. He said, I'm not the expert. I'm just the channel. And if I'm stuck, I'm stuck. And then I get unstuck. Uh, it's very yeah. cool. Very cool. That, is, I, that sounds cool. Yeah. I, just to digress on that, Paul. I mean, I the times that I did this, I I, I actually went through this four different times on weekends. You know, weekend yeah. retreats. And uh, one of the things that I noticed was that I was able, when I was playing the roles that were assigned to me, that I was mm. able to pick up from just the, the, the Akashic records, the field, yeah. wherever, the things that I needed to say in that particular dialogue. And I wonder whether uh, that wouldn't even be more profound if the people were sitting under the pyramid. Oh, for sure. For I sure. think so. Yeah. 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 No, no doubt at all. I, th- I think anything yeah. done in a pyramid is going to be more profound. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many people know or don't know. You might want to tell, just go a 30 second explanation of how, how the whole process works. What family constellation? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. Um, yeah. So, so what you're doing is you're, you're looking at an issue that you have that you want to work with. It, it will very often be connected to um, a family member. Um, very often it will be to a primary caregiver like mum or dad. And what happens is you in, in a say so if you have a workshop scenario we have a group of people you'll choose people to play different roles one you choose someone for your dad choose someone for your mom your brother and choose someone for you what you do is you place them in the in the area in the center where you're working you place them in different just where it feels right and in the direction you know facing in the direction that just feels right so mum mum and dad may be back to back, you know, or at opposite ends of the room or, or whatever. And you then go and sit down, which is a really interesting thing. So you pay no, pay no part in it. You've selected the people. Then the facilitator goes around, checks in with everyone, sees how they're feeling, and starts working through the dynamic that's that's present. And what we're always looking to do is just to get the energy flowing through the through the family. So the energies are, are in their correct place. Um, generations are in the right place. Um, people are facing their future different. There's so many dynamics that you can work with. And at the end, when the when the system has been optimized, you then take the place of the person you've chosen to play you. And you step into that place, feeling what it feels like. Now the system's been optimized. And you literally, um, you, you get a hit of, of you, you get the, the, the benefit of that at the very end without having to necessarily do the work. It's, it's incredible how it works. I mean, I don't know how it works. I mean, it's all energy, right, obviously. Um, and you can be doing things like calling in ancestors, working with ancestors from way, way back. You can be passing things back down the line that don't belong to you. There's all sorts of things you can do in, in family constellations work. Um, it's an amazing body of work, amazing body of work. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is Regina. I just wanted to add quickly, Paul, if you permit me. Sure. So what, what I've also seen people do is to release a lot of family patterns. Yes, family like patterns. For example, in my <clears throat> family, there were a lot of traffic accidents. Yeah. And I know my sister-in-law did one for this particular pattern too. Mm-hmm. Yes, pattern, absolutely. Yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. Thank you for that. Um, and that that could be um, genetic patterns as well. People have had, um, you know, mum had cancer, grandma, grandmother had cancer, 
for example, and people can can almost in loyalty create cancer um, out of loyalty, and a, a deep unconscious loyalty. And when you when you break that loyalty, get or get a uh, um, help the person to break that loyalty, they break free of the the effect. And I've seen that. I've seen that happen. It's it's incredible. Um, bad luck and, and, and all these sort of all sorts of things, superstitions, you know, things that run through families um, very often are taken on unconsciously in loyalty. And until someone breaks the pattern right. and is disloyal to the pattern, um, they then become free of, of the effect of the pattern. Right. It's uh, I've seen I've seen some very amazing things with it. Yeah, beautiful work. If you ever get a chance to do it, if you feel called to do it, absolutely do it. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I, I, I always won the Kleenex Award. Because uh, <laughs> I, guys aren't supposed to cry, boy, but I was going big time most days. Oh, they are, for sure. They are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one, one other question, I guess, that, that came to mind when you were talking earlier um, about the the client who was uh reconnecting with the the kind of the child or the this this yeah. young young person behind the brick wall it yeah. reminded me of uh hugh misseldine's inner child of the past i don't know if you ever read that but that was a no no okay it's a book that was written in the u.s i don't know 40 50 years ago and when i was in a metaphysical church the for a while the the minister would teach this as a class and so we, it, but essentially what it, the idea was that we have these <clears throat> desires as children that get suppressed. The child, you know, has mm. all of these, these wonderful mm. ideas and questions and so forth. Yeah. And when we, yeah. when we suppress that natural inquisitiveness and, and, and spontaneity of children, it can literally be, you know, just kind of encapsulated inside of our our being yeah. and, and we separate from it and so yeah, yeah. i have found sense. the pyramid in general to be helpful for me and i always define it as or generally do as my higher self but it's 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 bringing back into wholeness all of these disparate pieces that we you know because of the cognitive dissonance and so forth we, we we've separated ourselves from, yeah. from those so i don't know yeah i love that totally agree yeah yeah, yeah. And as children, most of us, you know, didn't get the uh, amount of love that we needed to really grow, you know, and flourish. That's and true. So just accepting yourself, you know, once you see that child aspect of yourself, accepting yourself and just grabbing a hold of your child and loving that mm. portion of yourself. I mean, that yeah. frees up so yeah. much um, healing. Yes. You know? Yeah. Were, were any of the people that you worked with dealing with addiction issues? no there was no addiction issues present um okay just curious no not that i no there was no, no there was nothing there no. okay okay no um there's quite a variety of things i mean i i because i said I, I worked with everyone already so i kind of knew part of their story and i did sort of hand pick them a little bit yeah. um for, for the purposes really of an experimentation sure. using the pyramid and, and i let them know that they knew they were part of an experiment Okay. Um, I will, like I said, I will be very careful in the future when I'm offering sort of workshops to the public. I'll be quite careful with my filtering process for for who I take on. Again, not to discriminate, but just being careful. You know, I've I've been at workshops where I've, there's been that victim mentality, and someone wants to take all the attention of the whole room, and oh. to, the, to the sort of detriment of everybody else. Um, and I don't, you know, that's a little unfair on everybody else. So a little bit of good filtering should hopefully take care of that in the future. Sure, sure. Yeah, I don't mean to sound harsh. It's just um, yeah, got to think of everyone. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so that's any, awesome. any other questions? Were you going to do an exercise with us today? I can do. I can do a little meditation if you want. Sure. Sure, yeah. that'd be great. You guys are happy? Yes. All meditations are good. 
get into that parasympathetic nervous system. <laughs> okay, so do you, is everyone comfortable? Just want to make sure you're, yeah, it's just nice and comfy. We're good. Yeah, good. And letting go of, of everything that's been talked about begin to let go of anything you're doing later and tomorrow just beginning to let everything go allowing yourself to focus and your awareness to come back to this moment in time sat where you are in the space that you're in and feel all aspects of yourself returning. Feel your mind returning. Feeling what it feels like to be back in the body. Starting to scan the body. Just paying attention to what's happening in the body without trying to change anything. Just awareness of the body. Breathing naturally. Bringing your awareness to the top of your head. Noticing a sense of calm and peace. Beginning to spread across your scalp. Down through the front, the head, the sides, and the back. Feeling of comfort and relaxation. Allowing this relaxation down into the eyes, and all the muscles around the eyes, relaxing, softening. Even though you've closed your eyes, imagine closing them again. As the relaxation goes down through the ears, the nose, through the cheeks, everything's softening and relaxing. Through the tongue and the jaw, jaw soft and relaxed. This relaxation moves down through the neck, the muscles of the neck, softening and relaxing. Feeling that softness down into the shoulders, base of the neck. Any tensions in the neck or shoulders allow them to fall away. just like autumn leaves blowing away in the wind. As this feeling of increasing relaxation flows down through the shoulders, all the muscles and nerves softening and relaxing. the relaxation goes down into the elbows, down into the wrists, all the way down to the tips of the fingers, arms heavy and relaxed. It's this feeling of relaxation and comfort this feeling of ease moves down through the body, down through the spine, and the chest, down through the organs. Everything softening, everything relaxing. Mm -hmm. Down and down to the base of the spine. 
The further down you go, the more and more relaxed you become. This feeling of ease and relaxation moving through the hips, all the muscles of the hips, connecting the upper and lower bodies. Everything softening and relaxing. As this feeling continues down to the knees, down to the ankles, all the way down to the soles of the feet and tips of the toes. Everything soft and relaxed. Noticing now a wave of comfort moving through your body, up and down, side to side, front to back. Softness and a feeling of ease flowing through you. Now in your imagination, picture a Russian pyramid. Pay attention to the color, the feel. Expand the pyramid so that it completely surrounds you. And keep expanding it. So it expands around everyone else who is listening to this meditation. Allow the pyramid to grow and grow, getting bigger and bigger, higher and higher. Until it surrounds all the light workers on this planet. Till it surrounds and encompasses every empathic person on this planet, surrounded and encompassed by this beautiful Russian pyramid, perfect geometry. Feeling that sense of connection to everyone else within this pyramid. It's bringing your awareness now to your heart, to the upper central part of your chest, to the energetic aspect, to the chakra, the heart chakra, bringing your awareness and your attention to that spot. in the safety of this beautiful structure. Go deeper and deeper into your own heart space. Keeping your attention in that space and expanding. Expanding. sense of love, connecting to the sense of love in your own heart. Expanding that love wider and wider in every direction. And the more you expand, the more love filters into your heart, the fuller it becomes. As you continue to expand love in every direction till it starts to connect and overlap mm -hmm. with everybody else in this meditation. 
until it begins to overlap with all the other light workers and all the empaths within the structure. Expanding, expanding and feeling other people's expansion of love toward you. Play in this energy. Allow yourself to go with the feeling and flow. The vibrations and the frequencies as it expands and expands the energy within the pyramid. Feeling a sense of connection everybody else breaking out of our own sense of limited sense of identity our own sense of separation moving now toward a greater sense of connection with everyone else with everyone else's heart Feel it expanding and expanding. As we connect on a heart level with everyone else within the pyramid, the energy within the pyramid amplifies and expands every other energy in this space. And the more we connect with everybody else, the more we realize that we are them. They are us. And begin the process of blending with all of those other aspects of yourself. Allowing the heart to continue to expand. Allowing everyone else in. Recognizing that they are all part of you. you begin to assimilate and absorb, connect within yourself to all those other aspects of yourself. Let it be a natural process, let it happen all by itself, no need to push or try. Simply holding the intention. Mm-hmm. Allowing a feeling of integration for all those aspects of you to reintegrate on a personal level. Notice what's happening in your heart. and in the space around you. Very slowly, in your own time, work yourself back to now, into this moment in time. Sat where you are sat in the physical space that you occupy, bringing the sense of connection back with you, opening your eyes when you're ready. Take all the time you need.
and when everyone's back, we can uh, have a little talk, see how people found that. <laughs> Charlie's smiling. Oh yeah, well I'm back. I'm I'm. I've got really a lot more, a lot more hole, <laughs> more connected. <laughs> Yeah, I felt the heat too. As soon as we, oh. as soon as you said, envision the Russian pyramid around you, instantly, instant heat wave. <laughs> mm, that was a real heat wave. God. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That was very nice. Thank you. Yeah. No, most welcome. I love doing that work. It's fun. Barbara says thank you very much, Paul. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to ask this. I see there's a person named Shilpa on. Is this the same Shilpa who was on our live stream last year uh, from uh, Turkey? Anyway, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for that, Paul. Does anybody have any questions for Paul or, you know, go ahead and comment in the chat how you enjoyed the, um, the meditation and how you enjoyed today's, uh, you know, speech. Regina <laughs> has to hop off, but she thanks you, Paul, and she said oh, you. it was beautiful. Have a great Lovely. day, Regina. <laughs> Bye. See you, Lena. Carolyn has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Okay. Yeah, sure. No, Karen. Uh, what direction do you face when you're in the pyramid? What um, I face, I face west. I sit with my back to the east, but I, I just go with how I feel. Yeah. In my personal meditation each day, I go with how I feel. Um, I think there's a bit of feng shui to it as well, like the, the, the energy of the room and where I feel comfortable. I wouldn't feel comfortable with my back facing the door. Um, I feel sort of, yeah, I, want, I just want to feel comfortable in the room. So I'll just choose the direction that is most comfortable. Yeah. The question just came up. How did you color the poles on your pyramid? <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so I bought some different sprays different seven different color sprays and then I, I i marked the poles you know i measured it out and divided it by seven and, and basically sprayed each section each color yeah. three times it took a long time to do but but it was you know it was fun oh yeah it's beautiful yeah yeah and then lack use a like a car lacquer is yeah mm. just like a, a finishing coat okay. like just to kind of like to secure it a bit more Okay. Um, but the poles are so slidey. Um, I'm probably going to have to put some sort of primer on the on the a, a paint primer on there first before I put the color on, just to make it a little tougher. Right. It does it does scratch a little bit. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's all learning, right? Sure. Sure. Yeah. The the plumbing grade has a lot more resin on it, finished resin. So that's probably why. Yeah. Yeah, the plumbing grade may not, excuse me, the furniture grade, the plumbing grade may not have that impact, but it's, yeah. not, it's yeah. sturdy, so you got trade-offs. Yeah, so, so it's quite a bit of work. I mean, if you, you probably do need to prime it with this, like some sort of super grip priming paint um, before you put any color on it, else it's quite, it's a little disappointing when you've spent all that time and it scratches really easily yeah. and you have to kind of re repaint it and respray yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, rather do the long process and I think it'll work out better in the long run. Sure. <laughs> sure. Fantastic. Now, if people want to get in touch with you, Paul, uh, please tell the audience how to uh, they can contact you. Yeah. So my website is paulbarlowenergy.com. It's pretty, pretty simple. And <laughs> you can get in contact with me from that website. OK. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Oh, I do have an Instagram as well now, which I've just literally just started using. So, and that's, um, you should be able to find me pretty easily on that. Paul Barlow Energy again. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Are there any cool. other questions from the group? Sorry, wonders if the paint affects the vibration of the pyramid. 
if the yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, probably no more than the plastic, right? I mean, what as in the colours themselves or the, the actual sort of toxicity of the paint, or I'm not quite sure. Could, could she be more specific? Sorry, do you want to unmute? <clears throat> I was just wondering because, you know, I know we're not supposed to have metal in the frame. Sure. Yeah. And um, I have a lot of questions about that. Like if, if we have devices inside, if the EMFs are higher, you know, it, because the pyramid amplifies. So if I have a EMF device inside here that I'm using, like if I put my iPad inside yeah. versus yeah. I, I don't, I don't really know how to detect if things are more or less. Am, am I making sense? Yeah, I understand. I mean, Charlie's probably better at answering this than me. Yeah, well, it's a nice segue actually into next week uh, <laughs> because I'm going to be talking about EMF uh, remediation. And nice. one of the things that I'll, I'll be touching on is using uh, or how the pyramid energy fields impact are impacted by uh, the presence of EMFs inside. But yeah, you're... In general, the life force energy is going to go down if you have an EMF emitter inside the pyramid. But on the other hand, uh, if you're doing it for some an effect of, say, you know, playing solfeggio frequencies, it's still going to enhance it. But we'll talk about that, and maybe next week be a good time to discuss that in greater detail. Great. Paul, are are you going to be doing um, workshops more often? Oh, Did yeah. you say? You're yes, I absolutely want to be. Yeah, yeah. Do you have uh, yeah. like an email list if we go on your site so you can notify people? Yeah, or we there, just... there is an email list, yeah. I mean, I'm hoping to get to the US next year once all this, this oh, silliness nice. is, is finished. You know what I'm talking about. Um, the global situation. Um, I'm hoping to come over to California in March or April to do our energy training over there. And then I will be looking at maybe setting up a, a workshop. I mean, maybe I could do something on the East Coast as well. Who knows? Oh, I'm in San Diego, so I got excited when you said California. Oh, yeah, so I think my course is at Redondo Beach, and I'm not quite sure uh -huh. where that is. I don't, yeah, I don't it's know. a little bit north, yeah. It, it, yeah it's a little, north. By a, a little closer to LA, but yes. Okay. I mean, anywhere, anywhere there's surf, I'll set up a, um, I'll set up a workshop, right? Just so I get surfing as well. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Great. I love your work. Thank you. Okay. Well, if there aren't any other questions, Paul, we thank you very much for being here today and sharing oh, your, thank you so much. your information. And once again, as soon as we get the, the new website up and running, we're going to have a link for the people in the UK and Europe to, uh, to Paul's uh, website, where you can go ahead and actually, if you're interested in ordering pyramids now, uh, and you're in that mar those markets, uh, feel free to go to paulbarlow.com. He'll be happy to help you, right? Yeah, great. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Paul. That was great uh, having you today. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, guys. One Very last question, if, yeah. if you will. Oh. Kim wonders if you might consider doing a Zoom energy therapy for people Ooh. who who own the pyramid and can connect this way. Oh, I like, with I like the term of that. Yeah, that can work. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well... Now, would that let's let's get specific on that. Do, do we need to? Should people get in touch with you? Would you want to do that as another if, if live stream get, in the near future? Get in touch with me, and then we can look at what exactly what they're after, and we can figure out how to do it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, we're happy to host it as well on a live stream, or if you want to do sure. it separately, sure. that's fine as well. Just wanted to throw that out. Okay. Okay. We thank okay. you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thanks everyone for joining us. Bye -bye. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Shelpa. Good night. Bye. Well, I'm good sorry, day. <laughs>